do we do an am I the a-hole? I think we should. I think we should do an am I the a-hole. But first, let's do some light housekeeping. If you're new here, welcome to my nonsense. If you're old here, welcome back. Old. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. And if you are old here, go double check and make sure you subscribe. Hit the like if you like. Leave a comment. It could be anything related to the video. It could just be a hello. It could be a few emojis. Anything. As long as cool. As long as it's friendly. As long as it's respectful. Hit the notification bell. It is always. I will link my tip jar in the description. No pressure whatsoever, but anything donated to the channel is very much appreciated. And that is what allows me to continue to make content. Content. I'm your local. ASMR server. Okay. Also, you can follow me over on Instagram. Same name over there. And that is where you can request custom, customized ASMR content. content. So let's get into some Am I the A hole? Am I the a-hole for not allowing my son's 17 tomorrow girlfriend to purchase him and his friend tickets for his birthday to a rap concert out of state over two hours away in a major city that wouldn't potentially end until after 11.30 p.m. and to add it's on a school night plus my son has a job. I have heard of the friend's name but I've never met the kid oh, nor his parents either dad. I don't think anybody is a-hole here, but I think your kid's gonna think you're the a-hole. And you know what? Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes. That's just fine. And I know it doesn't feel fine, but it is. Uh, I'm trying to think, so because I have, I've ha I have kids in their 20s, and I have my teenager right now. I'd probably say no to this one. I would. I should probably think I was the a-hole. But I've, I don't know this friend. You're 17. Sometimes, you know, 17-year-olds can be a little... What's the word? Flighty, right? I don't want something to happen out there. You get stuck. Who's gonna come get you? Probably me, right? Um, it's a school night. Did you ask off, like... You have a job. I, I think you guys can find something to do around here. I don't know, you guys. Let's see what the comments say. Somebody said, My mom probably wouldn't let me go at that age because it's a school night. And then again, I ran away from home, so there's that. Somebody said, What's the difference if he's working till 11.30 on a school night? If he's 17, let him go have fun. Well, what's the difference? That he's right down the street? Don't be surprised if they don't talk to you once they turn 18 and move out. Ma'am, are you 18? <laughs> okay, Elizabeth. Somebody said, I hate this comment. Parents have the right to say no. If your children are butthurt by being told no from time to time, then they go no contact. That's entitlement. I guess they can go get by with zero help from their parents. I can't imagine not talking to my mom because she told me no to a concert. Yeah, honestly... And I say this with my whole chest. Because, and this is coming from somebody that doesn't talk to one of her parents. If you go no contact because of your mom said no to some stuff to keep you safe, then your mom won. <laughs> she doesn't know it, but she won. Um, here comes Elizabeth again. But they asked to go. Would you rather them sneak out and not ask for permission to do things anymore? He's not 15. He's almost an adult. So you get it. I kind of want to go look at Elizabeth really quick. Yeah, that tracks. Okay, that's enough. That's enough Elizabeth in my life. This is the kind of stuff, like, not necessarily just this, but, like, when I get a bad vibe from somebody... That's why my blacklist is like three million long. Like 
I'll never interact with this person, but I already caught like a, I, ne I hope I never have to see another comment of this person's again and I'll just block them. I don't know hardly, I definitely know some of the people on my block list, but most of them are just like, eh. I just hope that I never have to see a comment by this person again out of the millions of people that Um, okay. So no, I don't think, I don't think parent is the a-hole. <clears throat> and I don't think the kid's the a-hole for wanting to go. But I just think that something like that might be, and you know your kid, maybe, maybe your kid can go. But something like that might be a mission for a full-on adult. has a credit card in case something goes wrong, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I don't think anybody's the ill, I think it's just, it's just trying to be a parent and trying to figure out what's the best. Okay, Daniel says, about a year and a half ago, my family and I got an adorable Bichon Shisu puppy named Chloe. As much as everyone in the family loves her, she's a daddy's little girl. Admittedly, I spoil her rotten with steak and roasted chicken. No seasoning, of course. My wife asked me to stop feeding her this because she doesn't eat her regular dog food anymore, and I agreed. For the last six months, I've been feeding her the real food behind my wife's back. I tried mixing dog food in with real food, but the pup just eats around it. Afterward, I clean the plate and put it away and take half the dog food and throw it away. So my wife thinks she ate it. I also give her fresh veggies and fruit that's safe to eat and I feel like the dog gets better nutrition than from processed dog food. She just had one year blood work done. She's perfect. Teeth, coat, all good. My wife bragged that it's because of her eating that she's now eating. Last week, my wife asked me where the chicken defrosted went. I told her I cooked and ate it, even though I fed it to the dog all week. So now I'm just lying, too. He said, if this gets one hot 1,000 reactions, I'll confess. But it's time to have a talk. Because there's a few things here, right? Maybe your wife doesn't think it's in the budget to give Chloe chicken breasts. Maybe those chicken breasts are for feeding the family. Maybe. Um, also, the line, like the, the level of work that you're putting into this lie is, is a weird. It's almost like you're cheating. Um, you can have a talk about a raw diet. You know, you can you can have that talk with your wife. There's got to be some kind of compromise. If your wife doesn't think it's appropriate to spend fifty dollars a week on dog food and, and fifty dollars a month is the better option for your family, then I I think your wife would get that one. Somebody said, you're not the a-hole for taking good care of your pup, but you are the a-hole for lying to your wife about it. Not the a-hole, not the a-hole. You the, you're the a-hole for lying to your wife. Just have a conversation with her about it. And if you want to feed your dog human food, you better be doing the research to make sure you're giving enough of the right things to make a balanced diet. Somebody said, you're already... Um, lying by withholding info and you want your dog to eat human food so bad there's recipes for homemade dog food with human grade ingredients dog is not getting proper nutrition from random bites of food it needs to be balanced you're the a-hole stop lying to your wife this needs to be a communication between you two. Oh, you're the a-hole I'm a vet tech high quality dog food Purina Pro Plan, that's what we give our dogs, is much healthier and safer for your dog no matter what other uneducated people in the comments tell you. You are not a veterinary nutritionist. You do not know how to formulate balanced diet for your dog. The brands I listed perform extensive feeding trials, 
and are formulated by vets. There's 54 comments on that. Somebody asked her, well then you eat it then. Why would the human vet tech eat something that was designed for a canine? I hate people. Andrea. Let's look at Andrea. Well, her profile picture is a cactus. She's got a lot of, um, oh, she's an amosexual. She's got a lot of weapons, like ammo. Uh, I'm not feeling Andrea. Not that, I mean, I have weapons too, it's just, I'm not gonna stand there and try to look tough on my profile picture. Okay. Anonymous. Okay, my turn. For the past three years, I have planned to get my grandson my two, 2017 Subaru Outback with 50, 55k miles on it his 16th birthday. It's a solid, safe car and he has a long commute to school on some fairly treacherous roads. He will be 16 in 6 months. I ran this by his parents and my husband years ago. They all supported the idea. I haven't traded it in because of this. I didn't tell my grandson because I wanted it to be a surprise. Three months ago, his other grandfather bought a 20 year old small crappy car for his girlfriend. The grandfather's girlfriend who said she isn't driving that piece of crap car because it needed a lot of work and it didn't even run. He then processed to give it to my grandson. He had it towed to his house where it's safe. He had it towed to his house. Oh, man. Where it has just sat. Recently, my grandson started fixing it up and getting excited about driving it. Now my husband said it would be inappropriate and rude of me to give him my car as planned. And he's pissed off that I disagree. This has been my plan for three years, and his parents knew this, so they would be fine, I'm sure. I don't want to see my grandson drive a car that's not safe, just so his grandfather doesn't get butt hurt over it. And the only reason it he gave it to him in the first place is because his girlfriend didn't take it. Oh, she's not the a-hole. Um, I don't think anybody is the a-hole. The grandpa was like, well, she doesn't want it. I guess I'll give it to him. The only thing that would be an a-hole is maybe if she does end up giving the Subaru to the grandkid and the other grandpa has a little pissy fit about it, then he might be the a-hole, right? But right now he's not. He just didn't know. I would say a little bit of the a-hole is like if other grandpa calls and says, hey, I'm going to have this car towed to your house. No, you're not. You're not having a car that doesn't work come come towed to my house to just sit on my property. So thank you. You're just like, oh no, we already have something in the works. So you'll just have to get rid of it somewhere else. Like that should have just been a conversation. Seems simple, right? Um, comments. Give him the car as planned. Let him fix up the junker and then he can sell it. Then he'll have gas money and insurance money. Somebody said two cars are better than one. No, it's not. You have people are fucking idiots. You have to insure these vehicles. You have to maintain these vehicles. You have to gas up these vehicles. You have to license and plate these vehicles. Two cars is not better than one when you're on a budget. You hoarder. Lack of communication in the family, give it to him for his 18th, or if something happens to his current vehicle. Yeah, I guess you could put another year on it, you know, like, but then also tell him, like, it doesn't need to be a surprise. Hey, Timmy, I am giving you a car for your 17th birthday, so keep those grades up, and that's what you'll get for your 17th birthday. Help out around the house, and I gotta car for you for your 17th birthday. My car that I've taken good care of. Another one. He can have two cars. One is a project car as a hobby and yours. A reliable car is safest and preps you for planning. I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't let two cars sit on my part. I don't even want 
like my teenager is about to start driving and we're gonna have three cars in the, in the driveway like that means you got to oops I just lost it that means you got to um, shuffle cars around in and out of the driveway and mm -mm, mm -mm, four in the driveway maybe they have a big space and a lot of street parking or something I still don't want an extra 2,000 pounds of crap sitting out front if I can help it. Am I the a-hole? I bought the property I was renting and living in. Though after the inspection, there was a lot of work that needed to be done before the mortgage company would take out. I asked the owner if he would help fund the work, but he wanted to sell it as is. I got to work. I replaced the steps to the front door. I did some plumbing. I spent a few thousand dollars. I live in South Florida. It was 2021 when the property values were going up. The owner gave me the selling price years before I actually agreed to buy, and since values were going up, he asked for 5 k more. No problem. Now the contract is signed. It's the day before closing. He comes and asks for 5 k more. I said, no problem. Now the contract is signed. It's the day before closing. Okay, so I read that twice. So he's asking for 5K more. I said, no, everything is done. Okay, he didn't ask for 5K more and then 5K more, but he did ask for 5K more. She's, and he or she said, Chris. He or she said, no. Um, the contract is signed. It's the day before closing comes to see me and asks for five more and I said no everything is done I read that line like five times <laughs> he asked if I could just pay him cash no way he's like I don't want to close without more money now he signed a contract so then why didn't he ask for more money he's like so now he signed a contract so I could sue him but that's more work he tried to convince me to give him 1k a month for five months I said no I came to you when this first started and asked you for money to help fix your property you said no now you come to me asking for money though after 45 minutes I said okay just to get him off my back knowing once we close it's over we closed and in the contract that we both signed stated we have no deals outside of the contract oh here comes the baby hold on you guys okay guys I went up to tend to my toddler and I came back down and opened up the page again it's just like that one's gone which doesn't make sense. I don't know how this page works. But anyways, I think that the landlord was the a-hole. Uh, you don't just get to keep renegotiating a deal, right? And maybe that property value did go up by more than 5k. If he put a few thousand into it, though, like he didn't want to do the work, you have to factor that in. Maybe the property value went up by like 20k, but you still have to, you don't get to just like finagle things after the contract's done. You have to think of that, you know? So, uh, the landlord's the a-hole for not pre-planning, not assessing what his property was worth. And generally, most landlords are a-holes, <laughs> so I'm not really surprised. The other thing is, you know, it could go really bad. It could have went really bad because this person could have fixed up the place out of his own pocket and then not had a contract, so they were both on. Somebody was going to get screwed. Somebody was going to get screwed, if not both, you know. All right, I gotta go feed my toddler, get him dressed, all that jazz, give him his morning snuggles. Uh, if you watch this all the way to the end, thank you very much. I hope that you have a good rest of your day, rest of your evening, and or a good night's sleep. Bye.